So welcome back to Blake's Den. Bit of a different video today. You normally see me messing about with things like that and that. But uh, today I'm going a bit further back into the garage and looking at this. So this is my EcoForest ground source heat pump, which uh, provides a heating and hot water system for my house. So there is 1200 meters of buried uh, pipe, which is one meter underground, and that's behind this unit. And within that pipe is a glycol brine solution, and that extracts the heat from the ground and transfers the heat to the house. Um, unfortunately, it stopped working. So the issue I've got is, uh, I've got an alarm on it at the moment, and the alarm is low pressure in the brine circuit. And if you look up here, the pressure is about half a bar, which is the minimum uh, pressure in the brine circuit. I spoke with the company who installed this. They've been out before servicing it. Generally, re really great. And they said, well, actually, you can do this yourself. You can top up the brine yourself and re um, reset the pressure in the system. And I initially thought, hmm, it's a bit of an odd thing for them to say. But when I've looked into it, it's actually quite easy. Having said that, there's not a single video on YouTube showing you how to do it for an Eco Forest ground source heat pump. Hence why I'm doing this video today. So if this video helps one person, then I'll be happy. Right, I know that the fill loop is on the side there, so I need to turn this off and take the covers off. Getting it apart is quite straightforward. Um, the top has a couple of screws at the back. I don't know if you can see them in there. Undo them, prise it off. You need to be careful because the control box thing has a cable coming out the back. So hence why I've sat that on there. Once you've got the top off, you can unscrew the front. Again, a couple of screws. And then a couple of screws holding the side on. And then there's an insulating panel to come off, which just pulls off. And then you can see inside it all the magic bits. Let me bring that light down so you can see it better. So those two connections down there with the red taps on, they are for the brine fill loop. And I need to put some more brine in there. Now to do that, I need a special tool, and I've made one, so let me show you how that works. Now this is my high-tech special tool. It is a garden uh, weed killer spray bottle, a pumpy type. I've put on a tap connection, a hose pipe, and from the hose pipe into um, a domestic hot water um, pipe uh, inlet for a washing machine. Um, I can use this elbow, this 90 degree elbow, to connect to the the pump because it's quite tight clearance there. And if I demonstrate to you how this works, I've just got a valve on there at the moment for testing purposes, so that valve is shut. If I pump up the bottle, pressure builds, and then I open up the valve. And this is just water, by the way, I'm testing it with, comes out. So that will allow me to charge the system. So, um, yeah, let's get this fitted and give it a go. Got that connected up now. The um, a little brass cap just unscrews, a bit like that. And then I've got that connected up. See, I've got the tap shut at the moment, because if I open that up, all the brine will come out. Um, right, I'll show you what brine, or more technically, um, the glycol that I'm using. This is what I've bought. It is a Thermox FPG20 non-toxic heat transfer fluid with antifreeze function based upon propylene glycol. So I checked the manual for the heat pump and propylene glycol is what it needs. And this is also pre-mixed and, and ready to go. So. Uh, just like uh, screen wash for a car, you can buy it diluted or um, or concentrated. So I just thought I'd buy this ready to go as it'll make my life easier. So I'm going to put some of this in the spray bottle. I'm going to put some gloves on as well and some goggles on in case anything splashes up at me. And we'll see if we can increase the pressure. I'm all set up and ready to go. It might be a bit hard for me to film it just because it's quite tight in here. 
but the reference point is up here so that is the pressure gauge and we're on half a bar it needs to be um, above half a bar half a bar is when the alarm triggers and up to a maximum of three bar so let's see if we can get that increased a bit Open pressure in here and keep an eye on the level and I'm going to open up the valve and we'll see what happens it may take some time I also got some leaks by the sounds of it Right, a couple of leaks there, nothing too much to worry about. There they are, the pressure is going up. We're just over one bar. So I'm going to do a little bit more and hopefully we're winning. That's now just under two bar. Everything's worked, a few spillages, but you know, that's kind of expected. Um, this setup, not ideal, but it, it got up to that pressure fine. So um, the next thing to do is remove the fitting, dry everything off and see if the heat pump works. Well, that's cleaned up, connections remade. Let's turn it on and see what happens. See if it's cleared that alarm. So it takes a while to boot up, it comes on and it tells you what language do you want it in. Um, so once that's done that thing, I'll bring you back. So that is booted back up now. No alarm. Uh, looking at the brine pressure, it has dropped a tiny bit possibly. I think that was just with removing that connection. And then if you look at the active demands now, so it is doing my domestic hot water. So it's heating up the water. Uh, if you want to know what this means, it means it's using 1.5 kilowatts to generate 8.5 ish kilowatts of heat. Uh, so an efficiency of, well, it keeps jumping around a bit, but 600%. Um, yeah. If you're wondering how it gets those efficiencies, then that is a completely separate video. But just think of it like a fridge. Uh, your fridge cools on the inside and heats on the back of the fridge. And what it's actually doing is pulling the heat out of the air inside the fridge. Well, if you imagine the ground outside my house is the inside of the fridge, I'm pulling the heat out of that ground, and the back of the fridge, the warm bit, is the radiators in my house. So we'll let this do this thing. Uh, let's just have a look while we're in here at the settings for the so brine production. So the pressure's at one and a half bar is okay. Um, outdoor temperature, ignore that one. Heating buffer tank, domestic hot water, so it's currently at 31.9 degrees and its um, target is 50 degrees. So let that do its thing and I'll come back to you in a second. So there we are all back together and working still. We've got a real temperature of a hot water of 41.6 and going up. So yeah, that's working absolutely fine. So if you've got one of these systems and you found this video useful, then let me know. Um, I say if it helps out one person, then um, I'll be more than happy with that. Um, if you're thinking about getting the heat pump, um, I thoroughly recommend one. They're expensive, but they pay for themselves. You need to have the right house, so you need to have the right level of insulation in your house. It's enough for everyone. Um, but in my scenario, this was perfect, exactly what I needed. So it cost me about £80 all in for the fluid. Um, the company I deal with, they said it'd be £120 for a call out. Um, so, you know, there's not a massive price difference. But, look how much fluid I've got left. I bought 10 litres, I must have only used about one, so I'm fine for another 10 more top-ups. So um, yeah, very, uh, very efficient. So uh, another topic I wanted to cover, why do you have to top these up? Well, with any hydraulic system, uh, that con you know, any system that contains fluid, you will always get lossage over time. Some of it just uh, escapes through fittings. 
some of it uh, is just down to degradate degradation of the glycol as well uh, sort of breaks down chemically and um, yeah can no longer uh, basically turns into gas so um, it, it can't uh, sustain that hydraulic pressure so thank you for watching the video it was something a bit different um, not normally what I do but hopefully I've showed you how easy it is to do this if you've got a unit like this or a similar unit a um, few caveats I'm not a heating and ventilation engineer I'm not a ground source heat pump engineer um, if you follow me and you break your system don't blame me it's your own fault um, only do it if you feel confident you know what you're doing I felt confident I knew what I was doing because I've seen the, um, the technicians who service this unit do it before so thank you for watching uh, don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video bye for now